Thumbs up, yes. Oh my goodness, you guys, this is, I'm trying to keep my cool here. I had no idea that so many people would be interested in pasta making. And Stuart, bless him, set up a little screen here so I can make sure I get my shots right and that I'm putting things where you can see them. But I'm also able to see all of your comments and to see how many people are joining us live and it's making my heart like <laughs> flutter. It's making me pitter patter. So if I say something completely stupid, just forgive me. So this is our third class that we've taught live here from our kitchen. The first one, we had three contractors stop by during the filming of it. The second class was our sourdough class and we had a kitchen fire. And now we're doing our third one and we have contractors here that are spraying insulation in our basement. So no matter when we plan these classes, it seems like something is coming up. So I appreciate just your patience and gentleness and I need some water. Let me grab my coffee. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna make pasta, early morning pasta. The last class we did was in the afternoon and I try to move it around so that people who have different schedules can join us. So a massive welcome to all of you who are here today with us. I know a lot of you are gonna be watching the recording. Welcome to the Elliott Homestead Kitchen. We're gonna to get to cooking because that's what we do here. But before we dive right in, I want to say a massive thank you to my husband, Stuart, who is actually behind the camera. And you guys don't get to see him or like interact with him, but he is the entire reason we're able to bring YouTube videos and podcast episodes and classes like this. He films all of our cooking community stuff, so he carries a lot of stress. So what a guy. Nice job, Stu. Um, a massive thank you too to my entire Elliott Homestead cooking community crew at Good People Digital. They keep us on track. Eli makes wonderful PDFs, which you guys probably have in your email right now. Um, and I could not do what I do without them. So super grateful to all of them as well. Before we really get our hands dirty here, I want to let you know that we're going to do a little special for those of you who have heard about our Elliott Homestead cooking community. So this is where all of this stems from. Every month we create five new recipes kind of based on just farm food, whole food, real food, from scratch food. And we make these recipes, we share them, we can deliver them to your inbox if you're a digital member or to your mailbox if you're a physical shipping member. Then we, we film right here in our kitchen an hour long video of us cooking through all those recipes. So as much as I would really like to deep dive into all the details of pasta making today, this is just going to be a very general recipe and some very general principles to get you started. But if you're really wanting to make some advancements in your kitchen or just feel inspired, I would love for you to join the Elliott Homestead cooking community which you can do by visiting cook.theelliothomestead.com. And that's where you can get those recipes, those instructional cooking videos, and then have access to our private and exclusive group of home cooks, where we share recipes and we share ideas and we share successes and failures and ask questions. And it's a really neat little private community. So we would love for you to join us. And everyone who joins the cooking community today is a new member will be sent an additional package of pasta recipes that I've made. So we're gonna make pasta together today, but these recipes are gonna help you take that pasta and turn it into an entree that you can serve on your kitchen table tonight even, because that'll go out via email right away. So you'll have access to all those recipes. So cook.theelliothomestead.com, we would love for you to join us as a cooking community member. And now, we are going to dive into pasta making. Our last class was on sourdough bread, which I think is really perfect segue into pasta because pasta is meant to elicit passion. I talked to my friend Maureen last night and she said, oh, I sometimes make pasta. I get out my pasta machine maybe once a year and it makes this gigantic mess. And I said, Maureen, it doesn't have to be like that. 
Um, and Maureen understands passion because she's a baker. <clears throat> and pasta really does require you just to slow down for a minute. It just wants you to be still in your kitchen. It doesn't mean it's complicated. It can be done very quickly, which I'll show you. But I just sort of would like you to loosen your shoulders a bit and take a deep breath because pasta making is really about the beauty of having your hands in the dough, shaping something by hand, being attentive to every noodle, every tortellini, every cut, every roll. And that's kind of the mindset that I always try to get in when I'm gonna make pasta. Like this is something beautiful. So I know it's only nine o'clock in the morning, so don't have wine yet. I have some coffee. Sorry for my scratchy throat. My kids and I are all fighting off just this little scratchy throat. Maybe it makes me sound sophisticated and mature. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so first off, you might have noticed, maybe you haven't, but I'm here to help you understand. There are really sort of two families of pasta. We have Northern Italy. So when you think about pasta, there's really two motherlands of pasta. We have Italy and China, both massive pasta regions. We're gonna be concentrating on Italy today. So in Northern Italy, when we think about what crops grow their best, it's a soft wheat. And soft wheat is traditionally used in baked goods, desserts, cakes, breads, cookies, that kind of a thing because it has a softer structure, typically a slightly weaker gluten. So Northern Italy, most of their regional pasta center around an egg pasta because we sort of have this softer pillowy uh, flour that grows really well in Northern Italy and its climate. And so in order to give it enough structure for pasta, we have to add some egg. Now compare that with the south of Italy, which is where you see a lot of those semolina pastas. Now you also just have hard wheat that grows a lot better in southern Italy and in southern Italy's climate. So as you head further south, you tend to see hard wheat pastas like semolina, which have enough structure on their own that they don't need egg. In fact, sometimes if you mix a semolina flour with egg, you've kind of got structure and structure, you can almost end up with a pasta that's a little bit too hefty. And so today we're gonna to be concentrating on Northern Italy on egg dough, egg pasta, because I think it's a really beautiful dough to make. And it also lends itself really well to einkorn flour. So I'm gonna be showing you a couple different flours today. I know not all of you have access to einkorn flour. So uh, type OO flour, I'm sure you've heard this before. This is a really traditional flour that's used for Italian pasta making. Einkorn is a wonderful substitute for that. Type OO just means a how fine the grind the flour is. And OO is a very fine grind. Compared that with like a semolina, which is a lot grittier, like you can feel the, the wheat kernels in there almost. So einkorn is a great, all-purpose einkorn is a great substitute for type OO flour, but you can also just use a general all-purpose flour. I'm just gonna remind you, just sort of hint you towards quality because pasta is just pasta. There's two ingredients, flour and eggs. And so we're really relying on the flavor that's in those two ingredients to ultimately flavor our pasta. Now, this is very exciting because it's so simple and people build it up into their mind. Oh, I need this equipment or that equipment or I'm gonna have flour all over my kitchen and not necessarily. I'm gonna show you, we're not gonna use this today because I wanna keep it really simple, but I do wanna show you what a pasta machine looks like. So if you've ever watched the YouTube channel Pasta Grannies, you really should. It's a wonderful British journalist who sort of took on this project of finding the Nonas all around Italy and studying their regional pastas and just watching them cook. 
And I've noticed as the pasta grannies get older and older, a lot of them turn to their pasta machines because it's a lot easier for them physically to roll the pasta this way. But it can certainly be done with a rolling pin and plenty of Nona's do it with a rolling pin as well. So this is what it looks like, just so you can see it. <clears throat> and these typically run about $40, I would say, online. You can get them from all kinds of different stores online. Mine is very dirty and very well loved. But it just has this little hook like this, hooks onto your counter. And then you'll just take your dough and push it through here, wind it through, and then you just adjust the thickness on this side. So if you're brand new to pasta making and the idea of rolling it out by hand is really intimidating to you, which hopefully after this class it's not, just know that this is an option for you. But this is extra equipment and plenty of Nona's made their pasta before pasta machines. So we're gonna set this aside, just know that this is an option. Oops, I got a battery pack hanging out here. How are we doing? Is everyone good? Mm -hmm. Okay, Abby's asking about um, gluten-free flours. Abby, I can't speak to that because I don't bake things gluten-free, but I do know that um, Jovial Foods makes a very highly rated gluten-free flour and I believe it's turned into an egg pasta. So instead of using it with just water, like a semolina pasta, uh, you combine it with egg to make a gluten-free pasta that way. So I would love to hear if anybody has done that in the comments, but um, I've heard of people who have good results with that. So for what that's worth. Okay, so here are our tools that we need. I have a rolling pin. There are specialty rolling pins that don't have these handles that are very long when you're a professional pasta roller. But you can also break it up into sections, which I think makes it a lot easier. So that's what we're gonna do today. That's probably what you're gonna end up doing in your home kitchen. I have two flowers here. We'll just make up some dough. This is an all-purpose einkorn. This is just a general all-purpose that I get from a local mill. I have some high quality eggs because it really matters. And if you watch pasta grannies, you're gonna notice that the grannies are very particular about the type of egg that they use. And you'll also notice if they're making an egg pasta, that their pasta is really yellow. And the reason it's so yellow is because they're using these really rich, beautiful eggs from their chickens, so, or their neighbor's chicken. Um, We'll, we'll get to this, but pasta does need to rest a little bit. So I've gone ahead and made up some dough, but I wanna show you, I can take it out so you can see, the difference that your flour makes ultimately. So this was made with the same eggs from the same chickens, but using two different types of flour. Hopefully this translates. So this is with my regular all-purpose flour and this is with einkorn. Can you see that difference? The einkorn is a lot yellower. And that's just because of the structure of einkorn and what's included in it when it's ground up. So it's just a good thing to remember. And it's totally okay to be a little bit of a pasta geek and maybe save your special flowers for just for making your pasta. But if all you have is just some general all purpose, that's totally fine. Okay. So we're gonna mix up our pasta dough. And then from this one basic dough, I'm gonna show you how you can just break it up and use it in a lot of different ways. So first we're gonna start with a single serving, okay? Oh, nice, double screen, super professional. Okay, so Michelle, you're talking about um, hard wheat vari uh, varieties in South Africa. Um, then just add water or maybe just add an egg yolk for a little bit of little bit of structure we all have to do a semolina pasta class because the taste is so different than you find with something like uh, einkorn completely different which I love so basic okay so we're gonna start here with our einkorn flour I haven't sifted it 
This is just out of my tub of einkorn. And you can do this in a bowl, absolutely, with a fork, absolutely. When I first started making pasta, I started making it in a food processor because I thought that that would be the easiest way. And it was in a sense, but then I had to wash the food processor. And I didn't like that because those are the small little hindrances to me that make me feel like I can't just throw down with some fresh pasta on a Wednesday night. And pasta is my favorite food in the entire world. And so I wanna be able to throw down some fresh pasta because what you find is the more you make fresh pasta, the more you love eating fresh pasta. And I think that is worth talking about because why would we go to all this effort when we can just buy pasta at the store and good pastas even. And you know what? I do that sometimes. I keep them on hand. What? Okay. Yes. Um, if you guys have questions, I'll make sure we have a question segment at the end. So if you feel like I'm not, they might get buried. Um, we can scroll through them. There are red scribble marks on the screen. I think I got rid of those. Huh, odd. Okay, um, so the more we can make pasta kind of just accessible to us every day, the better. I keep Jovial Foods um, penne's and fusilli. I keep Bio Nature's spaghetti on hand. So. If I'm in a pinch and I don't have time to make pasta, I always have some box pasta on hand that's made really well, but still it's not the same as fresh pasta. So I learned this method of making pasta, which is very similar to most all pasta making methods, from Carla at Jovial Foods, um, who passed away last year. And Carla just surrounded us in her kitchen and there was some other wonderful Italian women there and we worked our dough and they would, they would come and they would poke it and they would say, okay, now this is what it should feel like. Now this is what it should feel like. Um, and I, it's amazing how you can carry that dexterity forward. So give yourself a little bit of grace as you're learning how to do this because you will, you will find that pocket where you're just like, I know what this should feel like and I know maybe I need to add a little bit more water and maybe a little bit more flour. Okay. So this is a single serving. This is about one cup of flour, or if you want to weigh it out, which I highly recommend you do, that's why I gave you those measurements. This, I sung its praises in my sourdough class and I'm gonna sing them here because this is such an invaluable tool in your kitchen. This is a digital scale. So actually, just for the sake of the class, let's go ahead and measure this. So a single serving of pasta, or the way I like to think about it is for every person, you're gonna do 90 grams of flour. That's about one cup, um, slightly less. Okay, so I had just a little bit much. I always just add extra water. And like I said, you can, you can do this completely in a bowl, which I can do right here, I'll just show you. Okay, then we're gonna add one egg. So 90 grams of flour, about 55 grams of egg. That's about the weight of one average egg. So if I tear this out to zero, this egg weighs 54 grams. So almost exactly what we need it to be. So this is all how it starts. Two ingredients, 90 grams of flour, one egg, and that's what we're gonna build our entire dough off of. So you can grab a fork at this point, but I just like to use my fingers because I find it helps, it gives me a better feel for the dough. So are we, do you have this shot? Can you see this? Can Stu zoom in a bit more? Okay, Lisa, this uh, digital scale is no brand. It has no brand on it. It's just a pretty standard digital scale from Amazon. Nothing special there. Okay, so when I uh, put my bowl on the scale, just make sure you zero it out, and that'll say everything that's on the scale is zero now. So when you add in your measurements of flour and egg, you get it right. That's mo the only way to mess up a digital scale is not to tear it out to zero. Okay, 
So I'm just going to go in with my fingers, swirl this around a bit. Can you see that? Nothing crazy, right? It's really the texture that we're going for here. So einkorn is really wonderful and soft and beautiful. And your dough should feel very soft and beautiful, like a Play-Doh. I mean, I don't really wanna compare this beautiful pasta we're making to Play-Doh, but the texture should be very similar. And if you've measured your ingredients, it should come together really well for you. So you can see it doesn't just come together instantly. I'm kind of working it, just my initial kneading of the dough using the palm of my hand. I always you know, think when I'm watching pasta grannies like, oh, Nona's in shape. Because you have to have dexterity to make pasta and you have to have a little bit, you gotta put your weight into it a little bit. So I'm kind of just using my palm to sort of squish all those little bits of dough into my pasta. If you feel like your pasta is just not coming together and it doesn't have that soft Play-Doh-y feeling, you can add, let me show you how I do it. This one doesn't really need it anymore, but I just use the eggshell and I just add a teeny bit, just a teeny bit. By the end of this initial kneading, we should have the bowl cleaned. Just like so, okay? I'm always <clears throat> a little bit hesitant to talk and do this at the same time because it makes it seem like I've done something elaborate. When in reality, if I weren't to say any of that and I were to just throw a cup of pasta in there and throw an egg in there, that would have taken me 25 seconds. So don't let all my blabbing make you think that this is something more complicated than it is. And don't make it something more complicated than it is. Sometimes we can build things up in our minds so severely that it really keeps us from doing them. And I don't want that to be the case. Okay, you can see what I'm doing now. I'm kneading the pasta with, again, the heel of my hand I'm folding it over and sort of just pushing it into itself. Folding, pushing. Carly used to do hers like this. She would kind of get two going at the same time. But what we're going for here is just a nice and smooth, homogenous dough. And what we're doing by kneading this, not only is we're mixing the ingredients together, making sure there's no lumps of flour or pieces, no dry spots, but we're also activating the gluten. So just like when you're making bread, when you work it, we're creating a gluten structure, which is gonna help give our pasta some form. What I found is if you just mix it and you don't just even spend a couple of minutes kneading it, that the pasta doesn't have the same structure in your mouth, it's a little bit too soft. And so again, we're working with a soft wheat we're working with a slightly weaker gluten. And so we're gonna do what we can to sort of help give that pasta enough structure that it holds up in our mouth. Egg pastas tend to be just tender, a little softer in the mouth than something like a semolina pasta. But we still want it to be able to uh, stand up. Okay, I want you to see now how smooth besides the crumbs, this dough is. Can you guys see this? Is that okay? No, that's not. Yeah, here we go. Okay. It's nice and smooth. And now, after you do this, again, if you're not talking and teaching a class at the same time, this will probably take you two to three minutes. Then all we're gonna do is set it aside and let it rest. This is important, really important, because this helps the dough to hydrate 
that flour needs to take in the moisture, the water from the egg, and then it needs to relax that gluten structure that we just built up. If we were to try to roll this out right now, what would happen is it would be tight and it would just wanna pull back together. And that's not what we want. We're gonna create a sheet of pasta. So we need it to be a little bit more relaxed. So this dough, because I made this up about an hour ago. I think there's somebody in the waiting room. I made this up about an hour ago and I just kind of want to show you the difference. See how that holds it? We've got some real beautiful structure now. This one wants to pop back out. It's not ready yet. So we'll let that one rest for a little while. So typically if I'm going to be making a pasta for supper, then I mix up my dough and I put it underneath instead of plastic. I just put it under a damp tea towel and that will just sort of make sure that it doesn't dry out. That's really important because this does need to rest. So we'll just stick this underneath our tea towel and let it rest for a few minutes. Before we get into rolling the dough and such, Stu, do we have questions? Should we take a quick little question session? Okay. Okay, let me sit down guys. I'm going to sit down for a sec and just make sure I hit some of your questions before we kind of move on to the next. Um, okay, so Theodora, you're asking how long to let the pasta rest for? At least 20 minutes, but it can rest for an hour or more if you would like it to, so long as it's in uh, underneath a damp towel or wrapped in plastic so that it doesn't dry out. Um, Aaliyah, yes, you can freeze the dough. The one thing you need to think about with einkorn is that it will oxidize. And so if you mix the dough up ahead of time and you just leave it fresh, it can kind of go a little bit brown. Doesn't really do that with all purpose flour, but yes, you can. Um, yeah, can you scrub? Okay. Um, okay, Amy, no, this was just an example of a single serving. So I put measurements in the PDF that I sent you, which is 455 grams of flour to 258 grams of egg, and that's one pound of pasta, which is typically how most families measure that. So if I'm going to make pasta for my family, I will not do individual portions like this. What I will do is I'll make a giant mound of of flour, I'll just roughly scoop, let's say five or six cups onto the table. Then I'll add six eggs. Then I'll mix that whole thing together and then just add a little bit more egg or flour based on the consistency of the dough. But if you know how much dried pasta your family typically eats, then you can just make that pound of pasta and adjust it accordingly. Maybe you need to make it you know, a pound and a half. So just do the math to, to do that. But I don't do individuals. I do it all in one big dough. But as you're starting out, it's a lot easier to work with smaller amounts of dough. So this is a great way to start until you get the dexterity. Um, okay. I'm not sure how to say that name. I use type OO flour and measure my ingredients, but my dough always comes out stiff. Any idea why? Um, I would probably just say you need a little bit more moisture. So a little bit more egg or a little bit more water. Um, I wish all of you could poke this dough to kind of get a feel for what it looks like. I mean, it is fairly stiff because we need it to be, but um, it's certainly not dry. Okay. I think, did we get, we got the zoom in. Okay, yes, Ashley, great point. Um, I, all of the eggs should be at room temperature when you use them because it does absorb into the flour a lot faster when you have, a room, you have room temperature flour and you have room temperature eggs. It will not come together nearly as nicely if those things are cold. Great point. Okay, so now that that's done, we're gonna roll out some dough so I'm going to show you how you can kind of do that on a small scale in your kitchen without a pasta roller. 
I uh, really wish I would have made a latte before we did this. One question that's worth, point, uh, that's worth pointing out. We don't salt the pasta dough. Don't salt your pasta dough. Why? There's not enough moisture in the dough for the salt to dissolve. So what happens is you end up with this gritty salt in your pasta. And then what happens from there is you kind of get these weird little pockets of discoloration and that's not what we want. So instead of salting the dough, of course, we're going to salt our pasta water when we cook the pasta. And most people severely undersalt their water. It should be like seawater salty. So if I'm gonna, I mean, I'll grab a big old pile of salt and put it in there. Just worth noting, don't add salt to your dough. That's not gonna, not gonna go well. Okay. Okay, Sophie's asking, can she make this in the morning and keep it in the fridge for dinner? Yes, Sophie, you absolutely can, but here's what I would do. I would actually roll out the dough, get your noodle shapes made, and then put those into the refrigerator. Otherwise, your dough needs to come to room temperature before you're gonna be able to roll it out. It's not gonna work otherwise. Okay, so this is my regular all-purpose dough, which is great. And if you're gonna be rolling this out in your kitchen, you're gonna need a work surface. Marble is my favorite for this. That's why I put in marble back here because to me it's the most wonderful surface to make pasta on. But I also have this really beautiful old table that works great. It's just all the little flour gets into the cracks of the table, which I suppose is fine. It's a little bit of character. So this dough has also been resting. And a lot of you are gonna be beginner pasta makers. So I'm just gonna encourage you to start with a small amount, start with a manageable amount of dough. We do not want our surface to be too floured. We're not trying to make our dough dry. We're just trying to have enough flour that the dough doesn't stick, okay? So we're gonna start by just using our, that heel of our hand and this, do you see the texture of this? See how smooth it is, the, the edges, they're not jagged or dry. This is like perfect, ugh. see, okay. This is like the passion part. There is a feel to this pasta in your hands. And this is where it starts to come when the dough's relaxed. And it's, it's almost like it's saying, okay, like now you can mold me, you know? And you get to just, you get to be the creator for a while and decide what you want to make and it just yields to you and that's not how it feels when you first need it it sort of fights you but now it's submitting and i like getting to that stage and that feeling in my hands like that's what i'm sort of chasing when i make pasta especially when i'm making it on a weeknight for my family and you know the kids are rambunctious and maybe there's dishes in the sink and then you touch this dough and you feel it and you're like okay it's all good like this is so good and i just love that because it just really does force you to slow down so you can see my pasta it's just floured enough that nothing's going to stick and that's really going to be your ultimate goal during this part we're just going to roll it out don't think about it too much um, without it sticking. So if you need to add just a teeny bit, just sprinkle just a little bit, rub it around, okay? I'm gonna kind of start in the middle and I'm gonna push away from me. You have to remember, Nona was ripped, okay? Nona's got muscles. And every pasta maker kind of has their own technique. I, I always kind of end up with a circle. <laughs> Some people do rectangles. It doesn't really matter depending on what type of pasta you're making. You'll see a lot of the Nona's who will kind of roll it up and do this like little flick thing, which this one's not big enough to do. But there's not a right or wrong way to do this, okay? And Italians have a lot of traditions when it comes to their food, but what I love about their traditions is they're very strict. And yet region to region, town to town, five miles down the road, somebody does it completely differently. So, you know, you gotta take it with a grain of salt because everybody's way to do it is the right way. So don't feel like you're 
you know, doing it wrong or you're breaking some crazy rule by doing it. Just keep going. Now here's the other thing. People get very confused when you're talking about do it to this many millimeters or this many millimeters, and I get that. It's kind of confusing. So instead, I mean, you can certainly measure it if you'd like, but instead we're going to roll it until it feels right which might sound crazy, but there's going to be a few things that I'm looking for. One is that it feels thin. It feels about, you know, like a pasta dough should feel. The other is that it's even, so there's no major thick sides and thin sides. You can see I'm kind of rotating it. Maybe we flip it over. And that's just to keep it from sticking. Also, I'm not that great of a roller, so I tend to put pressure in the wrong spots. So I got to keep rotating it so that I don't end up with thick sides and thin sides. Okay? Now, typically, if Nona is rolling this sheet by hand, she will roll it until she can see her fingers. Oh, here. Let me put it down. She'll roll it until she can see her fingers through it. I can't. <laughs> it's backwards. It's throwing. It's completely throwing me. Oh, my goodness. No, I can't do it. It's confusing me. The cameras are all backwards. So it's not, to my taste, it's not thin enough yet. I can't quite see my fingers through the dough. So I'm just going to keep going. The edges tend to stay a little thick. You're pushing it out. Okay, now I can see them a lot clearer. Yeah, there we go. You see this? Yep. See my fingers through there? Yeah. Okay, so this is a great thickness. I'm looking at so many cameras. This is a great thickness for us to work with. Okay, now again, this is an hour long class and we're, you know, talking. But if I weren't talking, I would have spent two minutes mixing my dough and kneading it. Then I would have let it rest while I made a sauce or made a salad. And then this will take me probably about 10 minutes to roll out. And so relax, okay? This doesn't have to be some crazy thing. And I wish that somebody would have told me that because I spent plenty of time not making pasta because I just had it built up in my head is this huge thing and it's just not. Okay, from this dough, you can do whatever you want. You can make whatever you want. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that we can use this dough. So the first one, let's make some tagliatelle. Let me grab. <clears throat> I'm going to grab a knife and I'm just going to roll this up. Are you nice and, yeah, I'll make sure stew is nice and close here. Okay, there we go. So we make sure our dough is nice and floured. We don't want it to stick, okay? Now, I'm gonna say this too, before I forget. If you are using einkorn dough, or einkorn flour, it's very soft. And what can happen is if you roll this sheet out, and then you maybe want to pass it through like a spaghetti cutter or an angel hair cutter or something really um, small and thin, a thin noodle. It'll just gum up and it won't cut. And I did this so many times, beating my head against a wall. What am I doing wrong? And I asked Carla when we were in Italy, I said, like, what's the trick to doing this with einkorn flour to where it doesn't just wad up into this dough gum? And she said, oh, well, you just have to let it rest. So if you're using einkorn flour and you have the time, just let it rest. Let it sit like this in a sheet before you pass it through a cutter. But that's only if you're using a cutter. If you're going to make tagliatelle by hand or you're going to make tortellini, you don't have to wait, okay? It's just something to be aware of. So to make tagliatelle, I'm just going to roll it up. You guys see this okay? You'll notice, is it perfect? No. Is it precise? Not really. 
but I just have my sheet here. And of course, again, there are Italian food rules to how thick all of these noodles should be, but I'm gonna do it by eye because I'm a home cook and I can. So I'm gonna go about a quarter inch for my tagliatelle noodles. And I'm just gonna go through my dough just like so. Okay, none of this was hard. We mixed our dough, we kneaded it, we let it rest, we rolled it out, and we cut it with a knife. Very simple, okay? There's only one, look at this, you guys. Look at this. Can you see? Look at it. This is like, this is just truly the most beautiful thing in the world to me. Fresh pasta, fresh cabbages from the garden that I can photograph. Those are, they, those are it for me. Okay, all that I'm doing now is just using my fingers. This is beautiful, really beautiful. I'm just opening up the noodles, okay? And because we kept that flour or the dough nice and floured, they're not sticking. You always get something like this at the end. Sorry, Stu. Yeah. You always get something like this at the end, but guess what? This just means that this was homemade. This is homemade pasta. You're not gonna find this in store-bought pasta. I leave it. All those imperfections, I leave, I like those, okay? Here's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna sprinkle my noodles, toss, what this is gonna do is keep them from sticking together, okay? Now, at this point, you have a few options. At this point, you could throw this dough right into a pot of salted water, and you could cook it for two minutes. It cooks so fast, and you could have it right now. That's absolutely an option. Another option is we sort of create maybe a couple smaller piles like this, we set them aside, and they can just hang out. They can just dry. If we're not ready to eat yet, just let, leave them out. And they'll start to dry. They'll dry pretty quickly in room temperature. But let's say I make the pasta, I'm having family over for supper, they're gonna be here for not an hour and a half, and we're gonna have some wine and some hors d'oeuvres. Fine, just leave the pasta there. And then when you're ready to eat it, throw it into the pot of water and cook it then. Okay. All right. That's our first pasta that we can make with this egg dough, tagliatelle. Beautiful. Make a bolognese. I have a recipe in my cooking community that um, a chef in Italy taught me how to make, Francois. And it's amazing. And <clears throat> it's the best bolognese. And I am I'm being serious about that. Actually... It was fun. We went to a really nice restaurant. We were kind of wanting to teach the kids some manners and just kind of an opportunity to get out of the house with them. And Georgia ordered bolognese because she loves bolognese. And she got it and she was very under impressed. And I was like, well, you know, sometimes homemade is better. Okay, hang with me here. I'm just going to roll out my next sheet of dough. Same thing. The pasta, the cut pasta, hours. You can hang out there for hours. It'll dry eventually, it'll turn into dried pasta. Um, and it'll take a little bit longer to cook. But it can just hang out there. If you're wanting to keep it fresh and not dry, just stick it under a tea towel like this. And it can just hang out there. And that'll keep it really fresh and wet. If you don't mind if it dries, you can just leave it like that. Okay. The second pasta, make sure I don't stick here, that we're going to make is tortellini. Because there is just a little trick 
to shaping it, which I want to show you because everybody loves tortellini. Kids love tortellini. No one doesn't like tortellini. And that's because it's the best. Okay. Now there's all kinds of fancy cutters that you can use to make tortellini. I have this really great uh, ravioli cutter that's a brass ravioli cutter, but this is funny. Where did I stick it? Here it is. <laughs> For the life of me, and my cooking community members can attest to this, I like, cannot keep biscuit cutters or cookie cutters on hand. I don't know what happens to them. So I always just try to find something like this to cut. So I rolled out my sheet. I'm going to use uh, Owen's water bottle to make a little dough circle. Okay. Now watch this. Same dough. Here's a little ricotta filling. You can fill these with whatever you'd like. Just like so. Okay. Yeah, here, I'll set it there. I got to get a little bit of water. Stu's going to zoom in so you guys can see this really well. Scoot it back just a little bit towards you. Good? Go. Okay. So I have a two inch round circle. Again, same dough as I just used for the tagliatelle. I'm going to get the edges of the dough just a little wet with water. Get some little sticky for me. Okay. We're going to fold the dough into a half moon. You guys see that? Half moon shape. Now what I'm going to do is draw the bottoms together. We're going to try to create a little belly button and then seal these together. <laughs> you see the belly button? Mm -hmm. Let's do one more, but I'm going to try to get a closer shot. Okay, okay Stu's going to get a closer shot. Here's our tortellini. Okay. I have my dough circle. Oh, I see. Yeah. It's hard because I have like the people and the chat, so it's hard. I can't see the whole thing. Okay, I have my dough circle. So bring it back towards you a little bit. A little bit of filling. Is that good? A little water on the edge. You guys, this is the perfect thing to do with kids. I've also been known to have company over, and I'll have the dough all rolled out and the filling all made. Then we'll all sit around the table with wine and we'll make ravioli and it's wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna do the belly button, ready? Can you see this good? Point it, point it towards this camera right here. I can't see it. Okay. See that? So bring it back towards the door. Honey, I can't, I can't, I cannot. <laughs> there There's go. too many cameras. Okay, do you guys yeah. see that? Do you see how we made these? Look at these. Yes? Okay. Okay, Terry, I love that you teared up over the tortellini because this is how I feel. This is how pasta makes me feel. So make a slew of these. Hang out with your friends, hang out with your kids, teach them how to make tortellini. That's not hard. Nothing that we've done is hard. You just gotta get that feeling in your hands, okay? Now, check this next pasta out, okay? We have just a few minutes left Look at this. Oh, let's say I did a bunch of my ravioli and I have all these weird scraps. This is called torn pasta. And you know what? You can dry it, put it in your dehydrator, set it out in the sun, let it dry, and there you go. Add this to chicken soups. Add it to just some beautiful vegetable broths. Let it dry, keep it in a jar in your kitchen, and that's perfect, torn pasta, fabulous. Here's another one. Do you guys know what this is? Look, lasagna noodle, dry it. Use it fresh, keep it in your cupboard if you, after you dry it if you'd like, and you've just made lasagna noodles. We have just scratched the surface. 
completely scratch the surface of pasta making. But I hope that it's inspired you. I hope that it's helped to take that feeling out of your mind that this is some big, crazy, elaborate thing. It's not. This is something that just like bread making or, or jam making or anything, making pancakes. This is no more complicated. It makes no, no more of a mess if you're not teaching a class while you're doing it. But it's such a good opportunity. Okay, Stu's telling me, he keeps interrupting my thoughts to tell me that it's time to take some questions. Um, okay, goodness. Oh, you guys, thank you so much for your wonderful comments. That's so kind. Emily's asking, can you simply dry it and store it in a jar in the cupboard even with egg in it? Yes, that's how egg pastas that you buy from the store are stored. Um, like I said, you can do it at room temperature. You can do it out in the, on a sunny day. You can also do it in a dehydrator and it'll be absolutely fine. So if you decide that you just want to make a bunch of pasta on one day and dry it, great. But fresh is best. I always just like to make it when I want to eat it. Okay, what else we got? Do I pre-boil lasagna noodles or put them in the lasagna fresh? If I have a fresh pasta that's not dried at all, I put them in the lasagna just like this. I would put it in straight like this. If it's dried, I, I pre-boil it first. Um, okay, 12 year old daughter and I are loving this class. So wonderful. She's going to make some pasta with our yard eggs. Yes, 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 yes. Go make pasta with your children. Because if we don't pass this down, this is the whole idea behind pasta grannies. You guys go check out that YouTube channel. Um, they, they die. These traditions, these shapes of pasta, these, this dexterity, it just dies. And so we want to teach it on to our children. I want them to know what a fresh tortellini tastes like and how to shape it to get the little belly button. It gives me goosebumps. I love it. Um, yes, you can absolutely freeze the tortellini. Just do them just like this. Freeze them. Freeze them on a tray, you know, single layer. Add them into a freezer pack. Absolutely. Um, Teresa asked where I got my brass tools. I got them from a specialty Italian site. They're... Uh, the brand is La Gondola, L-A space, G-O-N-D-O-L-A. Uh, these were a little bit more of an investment, but I have used really bad tools for a lot of years, and I really like having nice ones. So I buy my brass. These are made in Italy brass cutters. Um, La Gondola is the brand. Um, do you, yeah. So Mandy, great question. If you're working from dried pasta, you're gonna to need to boil it for probably seven or eight minutes, just till it's al dente. Fresh pasta cooks much faster because it has already a lot more moisture in it. Barely two minutes. You'll be shocked at how fast fresh pasta cooks. Please hear me. Please do not overcook your pasta. It can be tricky if you've only ever eaten dry pasta because you're used to sort of the bite that that has. Taste, every 30 seconds, taste your pasta as it's cooking and pull it out when you're just thinking, is that done enough? Yes, it's done enough and that's when you should pull it out, okay? So don't overcook it because it, you need it to have structure and if you overcook it, especially with einkorn, it just gets way too soft and it doesn't have the structure to hold up against toppings or the sauce or anything like that. Um, Carrie, dried pasta will keep for a very long time. Again, just like what you will see on your grocery store shelves. So if it's dried, I mean, I don't want to say like indefinitely, but a very, very long time. So you'll know if it goes bad, it'll mold. So if something has gone awry, it's not going to be difficult to know. But the only reason it should mold is if it wasn't completely dry and there was moisture trapped in there still. So just make sure it's totally dry. Um, okay, Gian. Um, I don't really freeze my fresh pasta. Like I said, this is a pleasure to me, so I try to make it fresh. But um, I know that you can, so just make sure that it's in a single layer. And if I were you, I would try to maybe do it in, in a couple layers. So if I were to freeze this, let's say, in a single layer and I've got these noodles, I would probably just double bag them into, in a freezer bag um, just to kind of keep them as protected as you can. Um, but really, there's no need to take up freezer space when you can just dry it in the sun. I would probably keep it in the cupboard instead, just because freezer space is more valuable here. Um, Chris, yes, store your tortellini in the fridge. 
Again, if you're using einkorn or certain flowers, be careful because it can oxidize and it can turn a little bit brown. It doesn't affect the taste at all, but it just, depending on what sauce you're putting on it, the color might be a little bit off-putting. That usually happens after a day in the refrigerator. So if you're having company for supper and you want to make a bunch of tortellini in the morning, put them in the fridge, cover them with a damp towel, and if you pull them out at supper time, they should be fine. If you leave them in there until the next day's supper, they will have oxidized and turned a little bit brown. So just something to be aware of. Um, the recording of this class will be sent out as long as it takes it to download to the email. So it should probably be about 30 minutes, I would guess. That's usually how long it takes to sort of get our file from Zoom and you can have the replay then. But you should all have the PDF now as well. So again, uh, I would love for you to join my cooking community. Um, this is such a neat opportunity for you guys to get a little bit of a taste of what we do in our community. So when we film for that, we have five recipes that we're working through, so it gets really spunky and lively and fun. But the address for that is cook.theelliothomestead.com. And if you join the community in the next 48 hours, we're gonna send you some pasta recipes that you can put into practice right now in your kitchen. So again, these are our basic noodles. Now, what do we add to them? What kind of sauces and meats and flavorings and herbs? And that's what I'm gonna send you in that PDF. So if you can visit, there's gonna be a link in your email as well. But cook.theelliothomestead.com, you can choose a digital membership if you wanna do that. You can choose the physical shipping membership if you wanna do that. Let me show you real fast. I keep all my cards up here. So these are all my cooking community cards, notebooks, but this is the size of the card. I put mine in these little plastic perforations just cause I like them. But they're really beautiful physical shipping cards. My sister, is wonderful and she manages all the shipping of all this stuff. Some people really like to have the tangible cards um, and some people are digital members and they just print them off themselves and you can absolutely do that. So a massive thank you. We like did it right on the money and I'm really proud of us. There were no kitchen fires, no one came to the door, no children interrupted. So I feel like this was a major success. Um, please you guys, over on Instagram, or you can email me, uh, shay at theelliothomestead.com. Please show me your pasta that you're making. If you're gonna go and you're gonna give this a try, I would love to share that over on Instagram. So just tag me, and that way I can share it right to my story, and I would love to see what you guys come up with in your own kitchens. I'm really looking forward to meeting a lot of you in the cooking community. So we also do a live Q&A call every month and so I think that's coming up the first week of June. So if you join us now, make sure you pop in on that Q&A call and we get to meet officially. It's, a, it's such a fun way for me to sort of see your face and get to know a little bit more about you. So I hope that this inspired you to make some pasta for dinner. If nothing else, get your hands in that dough. You guys will love it and I can't wait to see what you guys make. Okay, we did it, yay. Thanks for joining me guys, we'll see you later. Cheers.